let's talk about H1B visas, 12 common myths and the realities behind them. The H1B visa category is one of the most preferred visas for foreign nationals who wish to work in the U.S. However, there are many myths attached to it. Let's look at these myths and learn the true reality about the H1B visa. Myth number one, H1B visas are available anytime during the year. Reality, not always. The H-1B visa filing period begins on April 1 of each fiscal year for employment that commences on October 1st. The filing period closes as soon as USCIS receives sufficient petitions to meet the 65,000 H-1B visa cap. Once the cap for a particular year has been reached, the filing period will be closed and will open again on April 1st for the next fiscal year. However, there are certain cap-exempt H-1B petitions such as transfers and changes of employer that can be filed any time during the year. Myth number two, all foreign nationals are subject to the 65,000 H-1B cap. Reality, not true. Although there is a 65,000 annual cap on new H-1B visas it being issued, beginning with each new fiscal year in October 1, there are certain exemption, exemptions from that H-1B cap, the cap exempt petitions. Some of these include foreign nationals who are already in the U.S. in H-1B status. They are exempt from the cap if they have already been counted for the cap in a previous year. For example, a foreign national in H-1B status is exempt from the cap when a new employer files an H-1B petition for them. Two, employers that are nonprofit research organizations and government research organizations post-secondary educational institutions, such as university and colleges, including two-year technical schools, and their nonprofit affiliates are exempt. Included in the exemption for these groups are workers who will work at the location of the organizations, even though they are actually employed by for-profit companies. For example, physicians who work or who are employed privately but work at university-affiliated hospitals will qualify for the H-1B cap exempt status. Three, also important to the cap count are the 20,000 exemptions available for each fiscal year for H-1B petitions where the beneficiary holds an advanced degree, a master's degree or higher, from a U.S. educational institution. For these exemptions, a foreign degree equivalency is not sufficient. Myth number three, I have a bachelor's degree so I qualify for an H-1B visa. Reality, this is a wrong statement, or to be more precise, an incomplete statement. A bachelor's degree is one of the requirements for an H-1B visa. However, the job offered to the foreign national must also require a bachelor's degree as a minimum for entry into the position. In addition, your educational requirement or qualification must match the requirements of the job offered for you. For instance, if the normal requirement for an accountant is a bachelor's degree in accounting, you would not automatically qualify for H-1B status if your degree is in business administration. Myth number four. To qualify for the H-1B visa, I have to prove that I intend to return to my home country after my authorized stay in H-1B status expires. Reality. There is no such requirement. The H-1B visa does not require non-immigrant intent. That means that you can have an intention to apply for permanent residence in the U.S. and still obtain an H-1B visa. H-1B visa supports the doctrine of dual intent. Myth number five, only big firms and big companies may obtain H-1B visas for their employees. Reality, this is absolutely not true. Any size U.S. employer may petition for an H-1B employee as long as it is a U.S. entity and has a tax identification number issued by the Internal Revenue Service. Many small, smaller companies may have to provide additional financial and business information to establish the need for the position sought and that they are operational. There is, however, no minimum business revenue required. Myth number six. The U.S. employer has to prove that he has attempted to recruit U.S. workers through advertising before filing the H-1B petition. Reality, no. There is no such requirement. 
U.S. employers are not required to prove that they have attempted to recruit U.S. workers before filing the H-1B petition for the foreign national. The only exceptions are H-1B dependent employers, employers who have more than 15% of their employees in H-1B status, and employers who received TARP funds. Myth number seven, I can start working as soon as my U.S. employer files the H-1B petition. Reality. The answer to this question depends on your current status in the U.S. One, if you already have H-1B status and are in the U.S. working for a sponsoring employer, you can begin working for the new H-1B employer as soon as the, that employer files a new H-1B petition on your behalf. However, in all other cases, you have to wait for the H-1B approval before legally starting to work. For instance, if you hold an F-1 status and do not have any other work authorization document, you must wait for the H-1B approval before you can start working. Myth number eight, I'm on F-1 status with an optional practical training work permit, the OPT, that expires August 1. My employer wants to file an H-1B petition for me, however, because the H-1B cap, the earliest start date for me with H-1B status will be October 1. I have to stop working August 1. Reality. Not necessarily. Under current rules, if your H-1B petition is filed before your F-1 OPT expires, you may continue working after the OPT expires. If your H-1B petition is approved for an October 1 start date, your OPT will automatically be extended and your status will be changed from F-1 to H-1 on October 1. If your H-1B is denied after your OPT expires, then you must stop working. Let's look at a quick case. Bruno, a national of Brazil, finished his bachelor's degree in biology and graduated in June 2009. He timely filed for and received optional practical training for one year. His position as a laboratory technician in a cancer research lab has worked out very well and his employer wants to keep him. Bruno's OPT expires July 26, 2010. His employer filed an H-1B petition for him on July 1st for an October 1 start date, the earliest date the H-1B is available for Bruno. Does Bruno have to stop working on July 26th when his OPT expires and return to Brazil until he can start working on October 1st? No. Since his employer filed an H-1B petition for Bruno before the current F-1 status with his OPT expired, Bruno qualifies for the cap gap rules. The cap gap rules automatically extends his OPT until October 1, allowing him to remain in the U.S. and continue working until his H-1B kicks in. Myth number nine, once I have an H-1B visa, I can work for any employer. Reality, not true. An H-1B visa is employer-specific. That means you can only work for the petitioning employer. If you want to work for a new employer, the new employer must file a new H-1B petition for you. Myth number 10. I cannot travel outside the U.S. while I'm on an H-1B visa. Reality. Absolutely wrong. You can travel in and out of the U.S. freely as long as your H-1B visa is valid. However, no. If you completed a change of status in the U.S., you do need to get a visa stamp in your passport to be able to re-enter the United States. Myth number 11. H-1B workers do not pay taxes. Reality. This is not true at all. H-1B workers are requ required to pay the same taxes on worldwide income as U.S. workers. They also pay the same Social Security, unemployment, and state taxes. Myth number 12. My employer cannot dismiss me from employment as long as my H-1B is valid. Reality, again, absolutely wrong. There is no such thing as guaranteed employment based on an H-1B visa. Subject to the employment laws, an employer can dismiss an H-1B worker at any time during the validity period of the H-1B visa. However, in such a situation, the employer will be responsible for the worker's reasonable cost of return transportation to his or her home country if the worker chooses to return. Also, if your employment is terminated, you lose your H-1B status until you have a new employer who files an H-1B petition for you before you stop working. Conclusion now. 
If you are an employer and wish to file an H-1B petition for your employee, make sure that you are not surrounded by any myths of the H-1B visas. Considering the increased scrutiny by USCIS, we advise you to con contact Visa Pro Immigration Attorneys to review the background of the candidates you have identified and assist you with the H-1B processing. If you have any questions regarding H-1B visas or need help in filing for one, contact a Visa Pro Immigration Attorney. Our experienced attorneys will be happy to help.